Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So in this video I'm just going to be doing some hot takes on free, random and unusual raw materials that I've picked out of my collection. I'm just going to smell them, let you guys know what they smell like. Um, hopefully you either find that interesting or maybe are actually thinking about buying some of these raw materials and so you can get some kind of idea of what they smell like before hitting that purchase button and spending all that sweet hard earned cash to add them to your raw materials collection. So this is going to be episode one. If you like this video and I get good feedback from it then I'll do more in this series. If not then we'll just bend the whole thing off. So yeah, let's begin. So today I picked three raw materials and those raw materials are we got Vera Spice, we got some Simroxane, and finally Cardamom CO2, which a lot of people in the Discord have been recommending that I get for quite some time. And it is, it's very nice, so let's start with that. So this cardamom CO2. Now cardamom is often used as a cooking spice, especially in Indian food. So it definitely fits into the kind of spicy category of raw materials. And yeah, this cardamom CO2 smells exactly like the cardamom, I don't know what you call them, little like pod things. They're like little green kind of bean looking little seed like things. I don't I don't know what you call these, but they're like the little bits of cardamom that you get, it smells exactly like those. Now it does make me think a little bit of that kind of curry or like Indian cooking kind of thing. Um, but that said, I have been trying this out in some different perfumes and I've got to say the results that I've been having are really, really nice. So this thing seems to work really well with pretty much anything really, but especially I finding um, kind of sweet vanilla kind of compositions, things like that. Um, it adds this, this, so the spice, the kind of spiciness to it, it's a bit, um, it's got this kind of, I wouldn't call it sharp, but I would say it's definitely got that kind of fizziness in the same way that say something like bergamot has, or maybe something like black pepper. and it really adds this kind of veil, I would say, of both kind of, it, it makes it a bit more kind of like crackling, a bit more, adds a bit of a slightly fiery um, kind of element to it on one side, but it also seems to add a kind of mysteriousness and a deepness, a kind of depth of fragrance and an eloquence to things. So this, yeah, cardamom CO2, if you haven't got some, if you like things like woody, spicy uh, raw materials, that kind of thing, then I'd really recommend you try picking some of this up. So the Simroxane, this is something that was released by Simrise, one of the large multinational uh, fragrance and flavor corporations. Um, and this was only released from Captivity, as they call it, back in 2018. So if you're not already aware, Captivity in perfumery is essentially when large fragrance houses go and develop special molecules uh, in their labs and then they go and patent them so only they can go and use that molecule in their perfumes and when they're released from captivity it means they essentially put it on the open market so that anyone can go and buy these molecules. So Simroxane was one of these molecules that Simrise had uh, developed, they had it in captivity for a bit, they could only use it in their perfumes and then they re and released it in 2018. So this one is a lot more subtle than the cardamom CO2 but the Simroxane, to me, the kind of the way it smells is it's got this kind of earthy note. So to me, the Simroxane, it has this kind of damp cellar note to it, and the best way I could kind of describe it would be kind of the smell when you open a packet of mushrooms, say you get from the supermarket. It kind of it kind of just has that um, mushroomy kind of smell to me. And when you actually look at the molecule, you see it's kind of it's got slight similarities in the way it looks in structure to some other earthy molecules, things like geosmin but it definitely doesn't smell like jasmine in the same way that jasmine is a very extreme kind of um, almost moldy soil like in your face pure earthiness whereas this this is a lot more toned down as i say it's got kind of slight earthiness to it a kind of a slight damp aspect to it and i think it's got a kind of mushroomy aspect to it as well so where you would go and use this i don't really know but i have to say as opposed to something like geosmin, which you might find maybe more useful in like a nature kind of recreation, 
The Sim Roxane I feel like is something that's a lot more toned down and maybe usable in a perfume composition. If you're going for one of those really unusual kind of out there, maybe fougere type compositions or something, looking at that kind of deep dark kind of theme, maybe something with things like leather, tobacco, um, those kind of elements, or if you're specifically going for something that is more like a kind of maybe slightly swampy or, you know, that kind of misty kind of um, a bit like out there in the wild kind of vibe then I could, I could see this slotting in, but I definitely don't think it's gonna be like a staple of your palette. So so overall my review is, yeah, I kinda like it. I think it's got promise, it's got potential, but I think it's definitely kind of a niche pick and it's very situational. And I think this is something you would only wanna use on kind of a certain few and far between projects. Finally then, we have the Vera Spice over here. So similar to the Simroxane, the Vera Spice was also a captive and actually this one was only released this year, 2022, by IFF. So this, this one is pretty much, you could say, like as new as new gets in terms of perfumery molecules. So what does it smell like? So to me, this one is pretty interesting. It's firstly quite a complex smell and I think there are a lot of different facets and nuances to it. It's got these kind of smoky phenolic elements so kind of things like you might build a kind of leather fragrance with, but it's also got a lot of other things in there. It's got kind of slight vanilla touches. It's definitely sweeter than something like your Eugenol, which is something this does remind me of a little. And also when you look at the structure of this, it, uh, the structure of the actual molecule is a little bit reminiscent of the structures of both Eugenol and Vanillin, which are fairly similar as they are. But um, vanillin is this kind of sweet vanilla aroma chemical, whereas eugenol is a kind of spicy clove-like aroma chemical. And this sits, I would say, somewhere in between the two. But it's not quite as simple as that. It's not just like a, a plain old mixture halfway between the two. It's definitely a bit different. Now, I would say this is slightly less yummy than some of those two. It's kind of less like a food that you would kind of really just want to eat. And so maybe it would be a bit less appropriate in a pure kind of gourmand fragrance. But on the other hand, you do have um, certain kind of interesting facets to this. So, for example, I can kind of pick out maybe almost like a banana skin kind of facet in here. I, I can kind of smell um, this kind of leathery, maybe almost leaning tobacco kind of aspect and it reminds you just of a lot of different things. It reminds you of that kind of, it's got that spiciness, the slight sweetness, and then it's got the kind of phenolic notes, so the leathery kind of notes, and then it's got like very slight fruity notes and other general, let's call it brown, because when I imagine this smell, it's a brown smell. So, what's it like? Is it good? How would I rate it? Well, this one's tricky. I think it's one of those ones you really wanna go and use in uh, things. Now, on the face of this, just kind of face value, if I was going to have a guess, I would imagine that it's not quite as useful as your kind of core, kind of cornerstones in a similar olfactory territory, things like the vanilla and the eugenol. If you want a sweet, spicy uh, kind of mixture of those two, then something like methyl deantillus is really, really great. But I also feel like this could have a place in that realm of things. And yeah, I'm just gonna have to experiment with this at some point and see what I can come up with. But so far it hasn't given me any ideas on any kind of particular composition or anything obvious to do with it. But of course, that only goes so far as your imagination can take you. Actually, now we are here. I wonder what happens if you put this stuff together. So like, hmm. So we got the Vera Spice and the Simroxane, so like mushrooms and spice-ish thing. Now to me this smells kind of kind of random, but it smells almost like a kind of plasticky new car smell. Not not like a new car, but like a the kind of smell when you open something, not quite sure what, out of like a packet from a factory. <laughs> so it's got that kind of new new something kind of slightly chemical smell to it. So that's interesting. If we take the the Vera Spice, if we take the Vera Spice and the cardamom CO2, so in this one the cardamom dominates, and I think that's because the cardamom is for sure the strongest out of all these things. But see, I think it makes it a little bit worse, but I think that's just because the cardamom CO2 smells so good on its own. Like adding something to it, you know, it's bound to smell bound to smell worse. <laughs> 
yeah, I'm not too sure about that combination. It doesn't really add anything, it just kind of smells like the two together. Then finally for the the Simroxane and the Cardamom CO2, what about those two? Again, it gives me kind of slight hints of this like, almost like something that's new that you've opened up. Like maybe, not quite like a new leather smell, but it gives you this kind of like, I don't know, open up a new iPhone case out of a packet or something like that. I mean, obviously the cardamom takes over a lot because it's got this strong spicy cardamom note, which is quite prominent. But maybe that says something about like Simroxane, maybe it's not as simple as meets the eye because when I'm putting it with things, it doesn't smell like um, damp cellar mushrooms anymore. Um, it's smelling more kind of like a new plasticky smell. So that's very interesting. Anyway. Those are my hot takes on these three aroma chemicals. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Well, I'll see you soon with a normal video, but if you like this, then let me know because then I'll do some more videos like this. So see you later, bye. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description.